Okay, so this is the new Razer Blade 14, and I think this is the greatest laptop we've ever seen from Razer. I'd actually say that this is probably gonna be the most interesting Windows laptop we're gonna see all year. It's something special, and what makes it special is the fact that it's super small, super powerful, and yet cooled properly. Something that a lot of companies try to do, but this is probably the best example we've seen of this stuff yet. And it's so good, that it's affected not just the way I look at other gaming laptops, but it affects the way that I look at the upcoming MacBooks. We'll get into that in a little bit, but it's just, it's just a good device. So a couple months ago, or a month and a half ago, I was sent to the engineering sample, and I was told not to benchmark it, don't show the numbers, because it wasn't finalized hardware. But I ran the stuff out of curiosity anyways, and I was like, the numbers seem too good to be true. It seemed like I was either some like a cherry picked unit, or like, you know, it was a binned CPU or a binned GPU, and the numbers just seemed, like they would not be representative of the actual retail units people would be able to buy. So I didn't let that affect, like I didn't want to get into it early, right? I was just excited for it. But then the retail unit comes in and it's like, it's just a really good device. So I'm gonna talk about the GPU first. In terms of the graphical performance, you can get this with either an RTX 3060, a 3070, or a 3080. They're not ultra high wattage, but they're high enough wattage to make good use of the GPU. The RTX 3070 configuration is probably the sweet spot in terms of performance. I don't feel like the 3080 is utilized all that well in this small chassis, but if you have the extra money and you want the best possible performance, that 3080 is a little bit better. Better. Now, one thing that came to mind when I was benchmarking these devices was the topic of the upcoming MacBooks, like the M1X or M2. And I thought to myself, those devices, whatever Apple comes out with, whatever it ends up being called, they are going to be more graphically capable than M1, right? That's why they're making the next generation of it. And this product here, the Razer Blade 14, I think this is, this might be really competitive against whatever Apple comes out with. Like this is the world's most powerful 14 inch device in terms of its graphic capability, right? No one else has the 3080 in something this small. And if you're someone who's wanted a Windows device and you want it to be small, energy efficient, super powerful, this might fit the ticket. And I can't imagine Apple's next MacBook to have a better GPU than what's inside here. I'd be very surprised. Now, in terms of the CPU, this is running the 5900HX from AMD. It's a very fast CPU, clocks fast, and it maintains that clock for an extended period of time. It does run a little bit warm. It doesn't throttle or anything, but it's just got warmer temperatures than some of the bigger laptops out there. Now, in terms of fan noise, the top end is a little bit loud, but the other two are perfectly fine. So if you need to get work done in a noise sensitive environment, you can just drop it down and you'll be good. Now in terms of the build quality, so this is very much a Razer product. It's got the standard black finish like we see on this device. This is the retail unit. It's got a regular black finish with the light up Razer logo if you're into that look. But there's a sweet skin that I recently found. So normally when I skin a Razer device, I go with the black skin, right? It's just like you want to get rid of the logo. That's something I like to do, but it also protects it, right? Simple black finish and that's how I've done any of my black Razer devices over the past few years. This is this new dbrand skin that's like, I feel like this was custom made for Razer products. I think it looks awesome. So it's a little bit loud. If you don't like colors and stuff, then this is clearly not for you, but this is a sick looking skin. It's called hollow green. I think it looks really good on the Razer blade. Now in terms of the ports, there's two USB-A, two USB-C. These USB-C ports do not support Thunderbolt 4. So if you wanna connect it to an external GPU or any kind of external Thunderbolt device, you're out of luck, bro. There's a headphone jack on the left, HDMI on the right, as well as your standard Razer adapter, like the power adapter. They're using the same adapter as all of their other Razer blades. It's like this regular 230 watt adapter. This does support 100 watt power delivery charging, but because it's a relatively high wattage device, you cannot power it completely and at full strength with the USB-C power source. You do need the regular power adapter. Okay. Let's talk about the internals. So inside we have a vapor chamber, we have a removable SSD, removable Wi-Fi card, but the RAM is baked onto the motherboard. And it's something that nobody likes to see. It's possible that they had to keep it baked on to be able to fit into the form factor, but it's still unfortunate. I also don't like the fact that you can only get 16 gigs in the configurations. There is no 32 gig option. And I think that limits a lot of the people that would be looking at this device. If you want any kind of 3D work or video creation, anything that's like not just gaming, 32 gigs is often really nice, but maybe that's for future iterations of this device. 
The battery down here isn't particularly big and I'm only getting a little bit over five hours of battery life on this device, which is a lot less than the advertised number that they had on their website. Okay, so the screen. This device comes in two screen variants and I actually was able to look at both of the options. This is the 1080p panel as well as a 1440p panel. So my personal favorite between the two is by far the 1440p. It's not without its issues though, but I'm gonna start off with the 1080p screen. The 1080p panel isn't great. I love the resolution and it's fast, but the response time is pretty poor. And I measured it at around 19 milliseconds and I can definitely feel it in games. It's something you'll notice if you play any kind of competitive shooter. If you're looking at this device and you want it for, I don't know, if you play Valorant or Overwatch or any kind of shooter based game where you, ghosting really affects your aim, then I wouldn't pick up the 3060. I'd get a higher specs model just to avoid the ghosting on the 1080p panel. The 1440p is a much better response time. It's a faster refresh as well, but I think a lot of the resolution is lost at this type of screen size, right? 14 inch screen, 1440p, it's very pixel dense, but it does drain batteries faster and it puts more pressure on the GPU if you wanna play your games at the native resolution. But it's a good screen otherwise. Uh, the keyboard, so I'm used to Razer's keyboards and I feel like there's a bit of bias here. I like the way that it types, but I think most people do have to spend a little bit of time to get used to it. It's just a very flat chiclet style keyboard. It can feel a little bit cramped, like in my first look at this device, I didn't really notice it at first, but having used this for a month and a bit, it does start to feel a little cramped at times, but it is a 14 inch device, there's not much you could have done, right? If you wanna have a good kind of clearance on the side for playing games, you kinda needed to make it compact like this. And I think most people can get used to it. The speakers don't sound great, they are small, Speakers on a 14 inch device, what are you gonna expect, right? Uh, trackpad, glass surface, relatively big. I think most people like this trackpad as well. So I'm just gonna wrap this up with, uh, well, let's start with price first. So this starts at $17.99, but I do not like the ghosting on the 1080p panel. If you can, splurge for the more expensive stuff, but now you're in like really expensive premium device territory, but it's just really what your kind of budget really is. Uh, but I wanna talk about two or three things that I think are interesting. So first, if you're looking at this device and you're like, I don't like the fact that it only has 16 gigs of RAM, I wish I had a bigger screen, I am convinced that Razer is going to put the AMD stuff into their big devices as well. They'd be crazy not to. To have this type of thermal leeway, right? You can put, you can put so much more powerful stuff when you equip it with an AMD CPU and not run into thermal limitations. So because Razer is all but thin, like they, they, they're totally putting into a 15 inch device really soon is my guess. Uh, and if they don't, then Intel has their balls in a vice or something like that because it does, does not make sense otherwise. Uh, the second thing that comes to mind is that I think this device could only have been pulled off with an AMD chip. If they tried to make a 14 inch Razer blade and put an Intel chip in it, I think they'd have to be a lot thicker or the fans would be much louder. It just wouldn't have been nearly the same. So you can really see the difference between Intel and AMD, even with their current generation stuff in a device like this. But I wanna close this off with this hypothetical situation. So right now with Apple's MacBooks, they have their M1 Apple Silicon stuff, right? And in an alternate universe, in an alternate timeline, imagine they never did their own Apple Silicon and they did this. Imagine they got AMD Ryzen stuff inside MacBooks you can see what they, right? You can imagine what that would have been like. I think it would have been really cool. I like what Apple Silicon is and what it represents, but I miss x86 on, uh, on Apple hardware. Just saying. Okay, now for me personally, I can't switch to this because of the RAM limitation. My footage, I shoot in 6K, it's just like, it just, I want more RAM. I need more RAM for YouTube. Okay, that's it. Great device. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.